He was always a pioneer. He was a pioneer aviator. He was a pioneer radio operator. Uh, he built the first radio station, we believe, that was survived from the sale of advertising anywhere in the country. There were other stations that were built as hobby stations or experimental stations by people such as uh, uh, Westinghouse, KDKA, but he built his himself with the help of some others, and he had to make it survive. And his theory was that if he'd, and this is his words in this day of political correctness, that if he put something on the radio other than a lady, a fat lady, singing, singing opera to the accompaniment of a piano, that he could perhaps get enough listeners to sell advertising. And in those days, 1923, you could not play records on the radio. So he made a deal with the Marigold Ballroom. And as you may know, dance bands used to travel around the country. And every night, he carried the dance bands live. And he called the station WAMD, which meant where all Minneapolis dances. And it became successful and later became KSTP radio. When you said earlier, survived advertising, <laughs> describe that for us. What does that mean? Survived solely from the sale of advertising. In other words... Uh, there was WCCO in Minneapolis, uh, which was run by the Washburn Crosby Company, which is, later became known as General Mills, and they supported that station. But my dad had to support the station himself. He had no money, and he used to sleep under the piano and eat donuts, and he had to go out and sell advertising. And that's how he made the station, we believe, the first station in the United States to survive solely from the sale of advertising. Um now, this is a, the first radio station. Yes, it was radio. And, and you mentioned <coughs> 19, about 1923, correct? That was 1923. And then his radio station grew, and he got backing, and it became KSTP, a 50,000-watt current channel NBC affiliate. <laughs> he got to know David Sarnoff fairly well. And then uh, he got into TV. He was a believer in TV. He bought the first television camera ever sold to anybody in 1938 or 39. There have been a lot of firsts in Hubbard Broadcasting. Yes, there and, were. And throughout this interview, I want to I want to talk about those. There is a, a as I understand, a first in regards to this radio station, um, uh, as far as newscasts. Well, there's more than I think. Amos and Andy made their first broadcast here. I think Peggy Lee made her second ever radio appearance here. A lot of people started on radio here. Pierre Andre, who was a great Chicago personality, started here. And he had a different name, and he, my dad sat him around the office and said, your name is no good for the radio, I'm going to call you Pierre Andre. And he became Pierre Andre, a famous radio personality. So there were a lot of firsts. But the thing I think that sets us apart from others was my dad's interest early on in news. And he started the radio station, and he was always interested in news. So he put newscasts on. Uh, early on, he he uh, broadcast police calls on his radio station and the St. Paul Police Department had, at that time was KSTP when it went to 10,000 watts. <clears throat> they had the radios tuned to KSTP and if they had to dispatch a car someplace, they'd go live on the air on the radio station and say car 10, you know, go such and so, which was of interest to the people. So that all tied into news, you know, what's going on, especially what's going on news, you know, current news. And I remember a great story he told me about. Uh, there was a great Teamster strike here, and a couple of people were killed. And there was a lot of uh, corruption and crime involved with that strike. And my dad somehow came up with a story uh, which, would which would have implicated certain individuals in this crime. He got called down to Chief Brunskill's office. And he, I remember him telling us the story, and, he, and Chief Brunskill said, Hubbard, you little son of a bitch, if you run that story, you're going to end up in the Mississippi River wearing cement shoes. And we all looked at him and said, Dad, did you run the story? He said, nope, didn't run the story. I was scared. You were just a little radio station at that time. But that's how we got started in news. He also started the first radio newswire. And, and what he did, he could, AP, AP would not run a newswire for radio. The Associated Press, the newspaper owners would not allow that. So he made a deal with a wire that ran from Chicago to Minneapolis and then to Los Angeles, which was used for commercial purposes during the daytime. He made a deal where he could use that wire at nighttime and exchange news stories with KFI in Los Angeles and I don't know who in Chicago and KSTP and have a wire from Chicago to the West Coast. And it was that, I think, I can't remember what he called the news service. I can find out. He started that little news service and that's what got United Press going with a radio news wire.